I'm Leo Walder for Kick Guru. Today I am reviewing this HyperX DDDR4 2933MHz RGB memory. Memory we actually saw at CES in January at Las Vegas. Uh, there's something neat about the RGB lighting they're using, uh, but let's break it down to a couple of uh, three aspects. The first is the type of memory. Uh, it's fairly fast DDDR4 at 2933MHz, so we're way beyond JEDEC, the initial uh, base speed, but we're way shy of the 34 and 3600 megahertz you sometimes see or even 4133 megahertz so in uh, most senses of the word we're in the middle ground maybe slightly below the middle ground in terms of pricing it's just under 200 pounds in the uk 199 that's good it is interesting to me that hyperx actually gives a part number decoder so i can give you the full spec of this memory which is uh, when you break down the part number, which is just a string of characters, it is HyperX DDDR4 2933 MHz CAS15 Predator Black Heat Spreader Third Revision Two Module Kit 16 Gig Total Capacity because it's two times eight gigabytes and it is controlled by, in this instance, a Zeus Aura software. Uh, HyperX does not supply any of its own software. They make a point of saying it is compatible with a Zeus Gigabyte and MSI lighting software and they make no mention of ASRock. Uh, so I'm going to say if you've got an ASRock motherboard and you want to know is it compatible, double check the website before you proceed any further. Uh, the uh, a Zeus Aura software is actually updated um, shortly before this review. Uh, I also have recently reviewed some Patriot memory and uh, a Zeus Aura was updated to uh, include both the uh, Patriot and HyperX memories and works very nicely with them. The previous version didn't work with them. Uh, so uh, if it's not on the list, don't go there. If ASRock says that uh, their software does not support HyperX Predator RGB, believe it, don't touch it. If on the other hand they say it is supported, great. Uh, but as things stand, Nuh -uh. The test setup is AMD, uh, socket AM4, processor Ryzen 7 2700X, motherboard is a Zeus ROG Crosshair 7 Hero Wi-Fi, graphics are slightly old and crusty GTX 980, but the emphasis here is on CPU memory performance rather than outright gaming frame rates. Uh, power supply is a Seasonic Prime Titanium 1000 watt, and the uh, SSD is not the SK Hynix that's on the end of the uh, Streetcom uh, test bench, that's not connected, it's uh, a Samsung 960 M.2 under one of those heatsink covers. Uh, so that's my test setup, uh, and as I said with the Patriot review I did quite recently, uh, part of the reason for using AMD is that memory works with Intel, that's just a fact. Just recently we've been getting some right results with uh, memory working correctly on AMD. It's been a long time coming, um, particularly the second gen Ryzen 7, uh, and this memory and other memories I've used recently are behaving themselves nicely. Up to 3400 megahertz seems actually very likely to work correctly. 3600 and above, hmm, lap of the gods. Uh, but getting up to 3400 megahertz reliably without any difficulty, that's really good. This HyperX Predator RGB memory comes in a variety of speeds, the lowest being 2400 megahertz, then reading off the list 2666, uh, this 2933, apparently you can also get 3000, which seems really peculiar, 3200, uh, 3333, and then 3600. So a variety of speeds. Uh, if I'm gonna be entirely blunt and give the game away, uh, going by my testing uh, with the Patrick memory and with this HyperX and also a G Skill SniperX recently, memory speeds they really don't make a whole lot of difference. The synthetic tests show you get more bandwidth with higher speed exactly as you expect. The question is how you reap the benefit of that higher speed memory. And unless you're using integrated graphics, it really seems to have a really small benefit. Processor speed, yeah, absolutely that helps. Memory speed, hmm. Not so much. Uh, the one place it does help is in terms of minimum frame rates in games. So you can do all your Blender and Cinebench type tests. Memory makes, uh, in, these, in this speed range at any rate, no difference. If you go really slow, yeah, of course. But we're way beyond bottleneck uh, territory. Uh, on the other hand, minimum frame rates in games, uh, if you put faster memory in, you'll raise that floor, which is obviously a good thing. But nonetheless, you have to really hunt around to see the benefit of faster memory. Uh, so with the Azus Aura software, you can uh, use the software to control your motherboard 
and memory as a unit. In this instance, the lighting is on the uh, heat spreader on the chipset, also on the IO panel, and then we have the memory itself, and it works absolutely famously. Uh, very nice. Uh, the light bars along the top of the memory do a fine job. You can just about see the individual LEDs, but you have to get really up close to see them. So the diffuser is working well, and the two memory modules are in sync. The new feature, which is something that is apparently uh, either patented or pat patent pending, it's patent pending, is infrared sync technology. And this is something that I saw at uh, CS at Las Vegas in the uh, HyperX suite and did not at first understand what was going on because what they had was a piece of cardboard, much like this notepad, and it was resting between the memory modules like so. And I came along to take some photos and I naturally enough removed the card so I could take the photo. And the funny thing is, the reason for the card being there is because the two memory modules are linked by an infrared beam to keep them in sync. Uh, strange but true. Uh, and when I pull that out, they are now linked. When I uh, block the beam, the, uh, they, they get out of kilter. Now the curious thing is, I've never noticed other memory modules being out of kilter. Uh, we've had uh, memory from Corsair and from G-Skill, now from Patriot, now HyperX. As far as I'm aware, those memories don't use anything to kind of uh, communicate optically. They communicate through the SPD and they work perfectly well. But for some reason, HyperX feels the need to, to have an actual, well, I suppose physical would be the best way of describing it, link, a data link. Uh, so the memory knows what the other module is doing. Very strange. Um, I can't help but think that they're essentially covering up for a problem because as I say, the other manufacturers just seem to do it through SPD. They have to do it differently. Don't quite get that, but there we go. Perhaps it's part and parcel of them not using their own software. They're relying on Azusora, but Patriot uses Azusora as well as their own software, works absolutely flawlessly. So that is the secret special feature, this infrared sync technology. It works. If you block the beam, they do something a bit peculiar. Uh, reunite the modules in uh, infrared glory, everyone's happy. The fact that other manufacturers don't seem to need to do it, well, makes me wonder what exactly HyperX is up to. Uh, overall, the memory itself works absolutely as well as I'd expect fast DDDR4 to work. No problems whatsoever. Plug in the memory, dive in the BIOS, Enable XMP or the uh, AMD equivalent, if uh, like this is Zeus, it doesn't actually have an XMP because that's an Intel thing. Uh, you get the extra speed, the voltage automatically goes from 1.2 volts up to 1.35. Speed is increased, latency is pretty much maintained, performance good. In terms of physical compatibility, the memory stands 42.2 millimeters tall, which is reasonably tall, not super tall. 40 mil is kind of when you're starting to get tall, 60 is really tall. Uh, if you're down at 25 that's really low so this is mid-range territory and obviously the light bars are a large part of that uh, the lighting is very much along the top of the module there's nothing on the sides uh, and it looks good it really does if you're buying this memory you're buying it primarily because you want it to look good it's going to be uh, integrating with your motherboard's rgb software so not as rock but apart from that it looks the part the software controls it everything's happy, pricing is entirely reasonable, and that special feature, that infrared sync, I, I'm not particularly sure about that. I don't see why it's necessary. It works, but whatever the underlying little uh, snag is, I wish they'd just fix that instead, instead of coming up with, look, we fixed this little snag with this other thing that you don't really need but it's not causing me any harm. It doesn't seem to have any other consequence, so what the hey. Looks good, happy. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. If you want more from Kick Guru, click to subscribe. Hit the bell button. We'll tell you about more videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood for Kick Guru. This is HyperX DDDR4 2933 MHz RGB.